Hello, hello, and welcome to my accepted art school portfolio video. Let's get into everything you need to know before applying to art school. Firstly, here are the schools that I applied to two years ago. RISD, MICA, MassArt, Pratt, Parsons, SVA, and FIT. I didn't get into RISD, so let's just cross that off. I'm going to put the cost of the school for me as an out-of-state student and how much money they gave me in scholarships. This is so you can see a comparison of the cost of the school to how much they give an average person applying. I'd also like to point out that this is per year. So the cost for MICA per year is $45,000 and the amount of scholarships they would give me per year is $22,500. So before I was even applying to these schools, I was visiting them, which you should also be doing. And when I visited RISD, I completely fell in love and I was dead set on going there. So when I got rejected, I had to rethink which school was the best fit for me. And the biggest thing that I considered at this point was the price. Because when you start getting acceptances and they send you the real price tag, you start to reevaluate whether or not the school is actually worth that price. Besides looking at your own finances, the best way to see if you'll be able to pay off any loans or debt is to research the average salary of people working in your career. So if you're planning to be an illustrator and illustrators are earning, let's say, 30k a year on average is going to a school that's 60k a year really worth the price for you beyond that you should look at school specific costs for things like dorming which on average costs around thirteen thousand dollars per year so the cost for the schools that i've listed does not include dorming so if you are applying to a school out of state or you simply want to dorm make sure that you take thirteen thousand dollars plus into consideration when looking at the price of schools. So if you're dorming, schools will often require first-year students to choose some kind of meal plan, which can cost around $5,000 on average. If you're not dorming, but you'll be commuting, you should still take into account whether or not you'll be eating out often. Also think about the cost of books and other materials. The school will most likely give you an estimate to how much these things will cost, but before you go back to school shopping, go on Rate My Professor or check in with previous students to see if professors actually make you use the textbooks that they claim are mandatory. Each school will also have their own fees, whether it be a maintenance fee or a technology fee. I have no idea how much these cost, so you'll have to check with each specific school. I had to pay them for my past year even though I did it completely online, so I genuinely have no idea what this fee is even for. Now let's get into my stats. Since I applied two years ago, I'm not sure if these schools are still SAT mandatory or optional, but regardless, I got a 1310 on my SAT when I took it. I also had a 3.7 GPA. Both of these are pretty average and I don't think they had much weight on my application. What I did put a lot of effort into, however, was my resume. Now, whatever you think may do a good job of showing how involved you are or how much you help your community or whatever, just write it down because they see thousands and thousands and thousands of applications so they need something to tell you apart from everyone else that's applying. A lot of my volunteer hours are just from helping a teacher out during my lunch period. So go to your favorite teacher, go to any office in your school and ask if they need help and ask them to sign off as that being volunteering. I also joined a lot of clubs. I didn't stick around in all of them for the longest time, but if I participated, I wrote it down. My school did not have a lot going on art wise, so I always looked externally for things that I could participate in and a simple Google search for free art scholarships or competitions will give you millions of results for you to apply to and put down on your resume. Besides your portfolio, your personal essay is going to be the most important part of your entire application. Just like the resume, this is your chance to show the school who you are aside from your GPA and SAT score. A good personal essay can tip the scale from being waitlisted to being accepted, and there are plenty of resources you can find on how to write a good personal essay, so make sure you work on that. Besides the practicality and the cost of going to that school, here are some other things that you should take note of. The top three things, in my opinion, that you should be researching about a school are the safety, the quality of education, and your social life. There are plenty of websites that will list off this information for you, but my favorite is ratemyprofessor.com because actual students leave reviews. You have to take them with a grain of salt, but I myself have also left reviews for the school that I now go to regarding all of these criteria. Something else that I did back when I was applying was looking up the name of the school on social media and DMing 
everyone that I came across and many of them were gracious enough to answer and that gave me a better look at whether or not the school was a good fit for me. Regarding your portfolio, there are many resources available for you to get a look at by a professional working in the field. Portfolio day is really popular but if you don't want to wait online for 8 hours or there just isn't one in your area, I recommend ICAD which is the same thing but completely online. You can also visit colleges and bring your portfolio for them to look at. You should also be aware of the deadlines that the school has set for applying students. These are all very different and very, very important. If you miss a deadline, there's no going back. I want to emphasize that early decision is permanent and you are bound by law to go. So unless you are 100% certain, do not apply early decision. Also make sure you're aware of any specific requirements your college might have, such as extra essays or art challenges. Some of the ones that I had to complete were the RISD and Parsons assignments, which were extra art pieces that I had to make, as well as essays for every other school. So you have to have enough time to complete all of that plus your general portfolio. Speaking of which, let's get into my portfolio. Work on your portfolio for as long as you can and create as many pieces as possible so you can have a wide variety to choose from instead of having to use only what you have, which is pretty much what I did. So here's my portfolio. I'm going to make some general commentary on portfolios if that's okay with you. First of all, if you spend a lot of time comparing your work to the work of others on the internet, whether that be sketchbook tours or I got accepted into Harvard, Stanford, and Yale with my art portfolio videos, just know that your work does not have to be as polished as anyone else's and it's completely okay to go at your own pace and improve one step at a time. And to prove that to you, I'm going to include some of my recent works in comparison to my old portfolio at the end of the video. I remember when I was applying to art school and everyone else's work just seemed so otherworldly and mine was just so incredibly average, but it's completely okay that my work wasn't like that because I got into art school with scholarships just fine. Although it may seem like it sometimes, art schools don't expect you to be a professional artist when you're applying to art school. If you were, they would have nothing left to teach you. You should include pieces that show off your technical skill level. This includes figure drawings, still lives, and observational drawings. That way, schools can see how much they have to teach you and where you are now. Technical work is always going to be a constant in art school portfolio requirements. Beyond that, each school has their own specific taste, even if they don't say so. For example, RISD likes to see more experimentative and expressive work. So if you don't get into an art school that you wanted to get into, it may not be your work itself, but the fact that your work doesn't suit the taste of the school. It's also really beneficial if your art tells a story about you. You'll notice in my work that most of it is pretty bland and none of it really has a deeper meaning. I mean, some of it does, but that always came after the actual piece itself, which is fine too. But if you can create a concept and follow through with it, and also include that process in your portfolio, that'll only be good for you. Not only would it tell schools something about your personal life and your personal style, but it also shows them that you can start off with an idea or a concept and go through with it to create a final piece. So even after all that, I want to remind you that you don't need to go to art school to become an artist. It's nice but it's not necessary especially if you can't afford it or it's just not a good option for you if you do want to go to art school i don't think which one you go to really makes all that much of a difference in the end i ended up going to which was not at all my first choice but it was the cheapest and for the past year i have had school entirely online like many of the schools that were on my initial list so we got the exact same education but for a very very different price and a lot of my professors also work at Parsons, Pratt, SVA, and other schools that were on my list as well. So I'm not trying to discourage you from going to these well-known art schools, but there are plenty of other options that aren't even talked about. Consider going to art school in Europe or going to your local college's art school, even if it's not well-known. No matter what art school you go to, the most important factor is how hard you work at improving. Sorry if I sound like a motivational guru for this entire video, but anyway, hope this was helpful. See you next time.